All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's another day, another match for the ESL India Premiership. I'm yours for this evening, CloudX, and we're watching Team XTS going up against Roar Esports. This tournament, organized by Nordwin Gaming, sponsored by HyperX and ROG, it's going to be a best of one knockout. One of these two teams will be going home. The other one, however, will progress through the brackets and will have uh, a clearer shot at Challenger Cup number two. That's going to be the next land phase of the ESL India Premiership. Following Challenger Cup number two, the top four teams from there will join the top four teams from Challenger Cup number one, moving forward to the Masters, aka the Grand Finale, all set to take place at the end of this year. Hextius on the die side, gonna pick up the Draw Ranger and the Darks here as they're opening two picks. They've opted to ban out the Ricky as their first ban along with the Mirana. Um, fairly meta stuff going on so far, you've got the Void getting removed as well. While well, Rory Sports Dyer goes for the Elder back. Titan and the Sand King as their opening duo. They've opted to ban out the Beastmaster and the Axe, so there's some real hate towards those four position junglers. Not too sure why though, given that Elder Titan is one of those that can rotate into the jungle fairly early and cause havoc. They then opted to ban out the Venge and the Oracle. Medusa, and now they'll pick themselves up the Oracle, so we are looking at a core Sand King coming out from them. Whether it uh, heads towards the off lane or the middle lane. Is something that remains to be seen. While well, Xtheus, they've got the third pick on the board, and with the Draw Ranger in their ranks, I'd be surprised if they didn't get themselves the Shadow Ten Demon. Admiral Conca. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Third pick, Kunka from XTS. You've Reserve got uh, Darkseer along with the Kunka. I'm assuming this is going to be a support Kunka. Hopefully, it's not a mid Kunka because Sand King's going to cause all sorts of chaos versus Invoker. him. We are going to see an Invoker from Roar Esports, which means that uh, it is indeed going to be an off lane Sand King. It could be the core one position Sand King that we've seen coming out of late though. Xtis wasting no time to get themselves the Phoenix. So there's their source of pure damage. Now Ten gonna be a useful remaining. tool up against those tanky supports on the side of Roar Esports. Five seconds remaining. That said though, Roar Esports does have plenty of lockdown in their ranks to lock him Reserve down in uh, the early phases of the game, preventing him from using the Icarus dive. As a tool to get away. Dire team ban. Death Prophet gonna be the final ban from Roar oh. Esports. For those of you that aren't aware of this team, they're a squad Dyer that hails from Hyderabad, and they've they've had their ups and downs. They've had they, they've hit quite a rough patch of late, but I believe they've picked up a new sponsor and are now training pretty hard to come back onto the top of the Indian Dota 2 circuit. Unfortunately for them, though, Sara Cups one to three did not hold any lock for them at all. Maybe Radiant Challenger Cup number two is where they'll get to make their mark. While well, Xtis will round out their draft with a Storm Spirit as the final pick. These guys haven't spent even a second of the reserve clock making decisions, so Xtis is feeling very confident about their draft. While well, Rory Sports, they're thinking it through Ten a little bit. They've used just a few seconds on their reserve clock, and with their last pick on the board, Five they're in no hurry to pick remain. up their carry. Reserve time. Alright, it's going to be some old school Spectre Dota coming out from them. Roar Esports looking to take this one to the late game if needed. But Spectre is also one of the best ways to deal with the Draw Ranger. The best way to shut her down is by getting in close, disabling the Precision Aura, disabling uh, the Marksmanship, sorry. And what better way to do that than to haunt on her and pop a reality immediately after. That said though, the Storm Spirit pretty adept at hunting down the spec. We'll have to wait and see which way this battle goes. As both teams are now loading into the game, picking up their heroes. Ten seconds remaining. 
five seconds remaining. Well, for those of you just tuning in, you're watching the ESL India Premiership, organized by Nordwind Gaming, sponsored by HyperX and ROG. I'm CloudX, going to be your host for this evening. We've got a double header coming up today, as Roar Esports will take on Team Exteus, followed by uh, Retribution versus Total Annihilation. For this one, though, you've got Exteus sitting on the die side with Roar Esports on the Radiant. A team from Hyderabad looking to regain their lost glory. As we are going to wait for them to jump into the game. Well, folks, I'm going to use this quick pause to uh, get my bearings right. Going to check up on the stream and get myself a glass of water. Till then, stay tuned, uh, stay tuned folks, as uh, I'm going to send a couple of messages from the tournament sponsors your way. then we're back and uh, we've got a quick resume coming out on our hands here let's start off with the introductions on both sides then shall we you've got roar esports Missing on the top. radiant sand king gonna be handled by 180616 you've got clown k playing the invoker you've got uh elder titan handled by pusher oracle gonna be played by deliverance and spectre gonna be handled by weapon x on the other side team x ts you've got uh uti utalimo Uta Limo, whatever that is, on this uh, Phoenix, you've got Darks here, handled by Kelvin, F4XD00, what a name, on the Kunkka, you've got Boka Comic on this Storm Spirit, leaving us with Draw Ranger, handled by Dwanyan, these are some difficult names to pronounce, and I've completely butchered them, for which I do apologize, and uh, just gonna quickly check my audio settings, because I don't usually hear Konka's calling missing middle and whatnot. So it looks like the music volume has been turned all the way down. I'm gonna turn that up a little bit. The battle begins. Lovely. Looks like the music is broken. Thank you, Dota 2. Well, it's double bounty rune picked up from the dire side though, as Phoenix did manage to snag it with the Icarus dive at level one. Okay, there we go. I'm so sorry about this guys, audio levels are completely messed up today. Gonna... Yeah, that should be better. So to start things off, you've got a D-Ward coming out, courtesy of this Oracle. Just find the D-Ward on the side of this off lane. It's gonna be a du it's actually an offensive tri lane coming out from Exteus. Running the Kunkka, Draw Ranger and the Phoenix. They're going up against a fairly strong tri lane though with the Elder Titan and the Oracle and they're already going to put it to use. The Echo Storm connects onto two. That's a lot of damage dished out on the Draw Ranger and with the Spectral Dagger coming out, this is almost certainly going to be first blood but a good torrent from the Kunkka holds two at bay and with the Icarus dive burn damage. Draw Ranger turns around, gets the first blood and then ends up forfeiting a life to the Oracle who's now going to make his way down through the river. He's still getting run down quite heavily though. Deliverance. Move into the rush pit and denies himself. Okay, for some, some reason the audio levels are completely wrong today. It should be better. I'm sorry about that. 
Alright, so it's a one for one. It ends up actually being a one for two, but one of those kills was at the hands of Roshan. And now, then now you've got Kunkka denying himself off inside the jungle. But uh, I do feel like Roar Esports uh, is on the receiving end of those blows, considering that the draw ranger got the first blood and then ended up dying to the Oracle. And the kill that she got was on the Elder Titan, but the Spectre doesn't die, so she's a part of the assist and does manage to keep the CS rolling right now under her tier 1 tower. Clown K meanwhile up against the Storm is starting to fall behind in terms of CS. Storm sitting at a comfortable 11 and 2 versus uh, just the 4 CS on this Invoker. He is going for the Quas Vex build this game. Massive stack here. Gonna be used to deny a creep wave. Courtesy Team X this. They should allow them to reset the creep equilibrium a little bit. Spectre. Not gonna be happy with that one. Meanwhile, on the off lane, Sand King up against the Darkseer. Darkseer's got himself a good 11 CS. While Sand King, he does have two points in the Caustic Finale. He's going to do a significant amount of damage on this uh, Darkseer if he gets in close. Meanwhile, Phoenix, he opted to go for the Fire Spirits instead of the Sunray at level 2. It's going to be a little troublesome. Doesn't have the Sunray for that extra bit of heal. While at mid, there's a gank coming through on the Invoker. He's gonna get run down. He does have the Ghost Rock, but there's a Sentry Ball placed in the lane. Invoker comic will get the kill. Now, recognizing that the Kunkka is headed towards mid, we should probably see Roar Esports trying to make a play of their own here at this bottom lane. Unfortunately, there is no mana available on this Oracle right now. Radiance top tower is under Looks like they're still gonna try with the Elder Titan walking forward, the Echo Storm, it will connect and this should be the death of the Phoenix, he did have the Icarus dive, he didn't have it sorry, it was on cooldown but now they're gonna see the Elder Titan getting turned upon, he's probably gonna end up losing his life, the Draw Ranger will claim that kill, making it a one for one in the lane, again a trade that I'd say favors Team x -tiers. they get the kill on the Draw Ranger, or rather for the Draw Ranger, and uh, they end up sacrificing their support Phoenix for it. Now we're gonna see Pusher rotating towards middle lane, hoping to make a play on the storm before he hits level six. A little too soon there on the tornado. You've even got the Phoenix now diving through. With the fire spirit spit out on him. Echo Storm disconnect, but now they don't have the uh, Icarus dive of the Phoenix. This could be his death. With the cold snap and the EMP, they'll get the kill comfortably. Even the storm has lost his mana and he's trying to fight through the invoker, but that's a bad idea. It looks like the storm will just barely survive. He has the arcane rune. That was a little troublesome, but here comes the Kunkka. He gets the X Mark Torrent off, doesn't get the last hit. He actually gets it now, as they're even going to turn on the Elder Titan. He's got the extra movement speed, though, from the Astral Spirit. He's running under his tower. There's a Torrent. It's going to get dodged, and he might just survive this. He's going to have to juke through the trees, eats a Tango on his way out, and he does manage to survive. But all the while at the bottom lane, Ra Ranger was left alone, and that seems to be enough for Deliverance to get the kill. 4 for 4, just uh, 4 minutes into this game. It does look like both teams want to fight and they want to fight often. Well, that top Sand King is now starting to take a bit of a lead here. As he's up to 22 CS, up against that Darks here. Who really can't stand in the face, face of this uh, almost maxed out caustic finale Sand King. He's even chosen to skip the point in the epicenter. Just to be able to deal with these Ion Shell spams, but uh oh! He's now on low HP. Here comes the Surge Ion Shell Darks here with the Karate Chops. He's gonna get the kill. Kelvin salvages the lane quite efficiently there. It does look like x is winning all three lanes at the moment. This bottom lane, a little closely contested, but... What the heck was that smoke? It was under a creep, and it should have been scouted out. But they're gonna walk in anyway and try for a kill on Deliverance. Konka walking straight into him. They'll get the X mark. Torrent is there as well. They do have the damage to bring it down, but now they've got the PC eating thrown on him. It's gonna dodge some of the magic damage, but doesn't do too much against the physical DPS. A three-man Echo Stomp with a Spectre just beating up on them in the middle of the fray, but Spectre is in over her head here as the Elder Titan gets in close. To dish out some damage onto the Drow now with the Dagger. They're gonna chase down the Drow. Lots of damage being dished out. Lots of heals coming through with the Stick Charges and the Fairy Fire. They're gonna turn with the Gust. Draw Ranger going for the spec. Even the Storm joining the fray. They should get this kill on the Spectre with the Overload Charge coming through. But the Draw will lose a life behind as the Elder Titan runs him down. 
Vought, Poker Comic looking for the kill. There's the torrent connecting as well, and with the bottle charges, he's got another hit with the overload. He'll get a double kill on this storm, making his rotation well worth it. But the fight's not over just yet because Deliverance comes in and cleans up on the Kunkka at the end of it all. What a bloodbath in the bottom lane. 8 and 6, the score slightly in favor of XTS. Roar Esports are showing some signs of life. So again, we're going to see Deliverance getting aggressive on this Draw Ranger. Hitting him with the Purifying Flames first, and then purging it off with the Fade Bolt. F Fade Bolt? Did I call it Fade Bolt? I mean the Fortune's End. This Kunkka though, he's been the clear winner in all of this. He's sitting at 1, 2 and 6 assists. And he's up to level 5 as his support just 7 minutes in. X marks the spot. The torrent damage will be dodged and it should be enough to keep Deliverance alive. But he's actually walking forward trying to get the kill on the draw. But Draw Ranger just turns and makes mince meat out of him. Another death on the side of Roar Esports. Now Sand King's coming through. He still does not have the epicenter. He's looking for a two man burrow strike but can't seem to get it. X mark onto the Spectre again. They'll throw him up into the air with the torrent. But here's the Sand King. Gets the Parasite, doesn't connect on the Draw Ranger and is in a bit of a pickle himself now. But the Kunkka, standing out on the front lines, takes another beating from the Spectre. What a horrible laning phase this is turning out to be for Roar Esports. But they've managed to force out a TP rotation from this Storm Spirit as well. And it doesn't look like the Storm is going to get anything with this. Thanking. Gonna be able to snag this invis room right under the storm spirit's nose. Storm does have the soul ring available, so he can use it to get away if needed. Dyer's For now, Kunkka waiting in the vicinity. They've dropped down an observer ward. Oracle's still coming through. They're gonna focus down the this uh, Kunkka and said, Good borrow strike. He waited for it, got the two man borrow, and will now be able to secure a double kill for Deliverance's Oracle. Very well played there by 180616. With that, he's now up to level 8, has the maxed out Caustic Finale along with the Burrow Strike. I feel like a point in the epicenter really wouldn't hurt at this at this point in the game. Well, on the top side, Elder Titan uses this time to get a little bit of extra EXP into his back pocket. And all the while, it made Clown K continues to pressure the lane and keep his CS rolling. He's building towards an early Midas despite being on the Quas Rex roll, so... They are going to hunker down for the late game phase here on the side of Roar Esports. Meanwhile, Spectre going for a bad manish build. Picking up the drums. Kelvin on the top lane starting to creep skip here, but the TP will come through. It's going to be the Invoker. They do have the Tornado, and with the Spectre using the Haunt, Kelvin is going to be dead to rights here. With the Invoker claiming the kill, Spectre claiming the assist, making their rotations well worth it for Roar Esports. Well, they've now leveled the score now to 9 for 9, 9 minutes into this game. In fact, they'll take the lead as this bottom lane. Phoenix will suffer death at the hands of the Sand King and the Oracle. This Oracle's on a killing spree and is really lifting the weight for his teammates. 7 and 3 with the Purifying Flames providing plenty of burst damage. It's working well for them so far. Storm Spirit up to level 8 now. Looking for a possible Dyer's jump on this in Boko. On that top, Kunkka, he's gonna get scouted out here. He might just be able to get this kill if they connect with this Echo Storm. They put him to sleep. They've got the fortunes and they hold him in position, and they're even gonna get the desolate damage procking from the Spectre. There's this Earth that are coming through as well. That'll be the death of the Kunkka, but the Storm is here. He's looking for a return kill. He will get it onto Pusher. And now they're gonna move forward. Sand King coming through, gets the Burrow Strike off, it's just on a single hero, he got it with the Caustic Finale and with the Burst Damage coming out from the Purifying Flames, they'll secure a double kill for the spec. It does cost them a 5 man rotation, Clown K was on his way towards the top lane, didn't quite get there in time but they end up making it a 2 for 1 trade in favour of Roar Esports, bringing down both the Kunkka and the Storm Spirit in exchange for a support Elder Titan, a trade that Roar Esports will be very happy to take again and again. Well, 
another initiation going to take place here, but I don't think they have enough firepower. And in fact, with the epicenter now available on the Sand King, they don't even need it. Just a Borrow Strike with a Purifying Flame, maxed out Purifying Flame. There's a truck ton of burst damage coming out from these two heroes. Now it's even going to be an 11 minute Blink Tiger on this Sand King finished up. And he's almost at level 11 as well. Radiant's bottom tower. Meanwhile, Darkseer walking out into no man's land. They will catch him with the Echo Storm and the EMP connecting. That's going to be a dead Darkseer. Very easy pick off here for Clown K and Pusher. I feel like Exodus really needs to start doing something here. They need, uh, they need to get level 6 on that Phoenix and then try and take fights again and again. Because uh, as this ga lim game progresses to the later phases, your esports is only going to get stronger. Good dodge there from Deliverance using the Fates Edict to uh, mitigate the magic damage. But again, a two man borrow strike holds the Storm as well as the Kunkka in position. And with the Tornado now catching out the Storm Spirit on his retreat, he might be able to get the kill, but he's got another zip. With the Ball Lightning, he will get away. And this should transition into a tier 1 tower takedown for Roar esports. Lots of money changing hands here as the Sand King. Looks like he did expend the blink in the epicenter to score a kill under Draw Ranger. Well worth it for that solo kill while his teammates will claim the tier 1 at mid. I've got to say this looks like Rory is supposed to just taking charge of this mid game phase and not letting go. The net worth drop slowly escaping Exteus as the EXP drop starts to soar high in favor of Roar Esports as well. <clears throat> this does seem like a team that's found their rhythm come mid-game phase and with the Invoker picking up the Midas, they're gonna start scaling heavily into the later phases as well. Hopefully this pause won't last too long. You've got Roar Esports hitting the pause button here. The game plan for them seems fairly simple. Just group up every time they've got the epicenter and take fights. Look to take down the other tier 1 towers and then commandeer the enemy jungle. Well, x -tiers. It's just going to be base defense time for them. They've got a fairly decent lineup to hold high ground. And they've got decent amounts of team fight potential with the Darkseer, Phoenix and the Kunkka. But uh, whenever you're running a Drow Ranger strat, you're pretty much on a clock. Clearly this Draw Ranger is confused, picking up three bands of Elven skin. Probably gonna be power treads building into a Dragon Lance here. Alright folks, another long pause. I'm gonna switch over to some messages from our sponsors. When we're back, hopefully this will have this game on the way. Stick around, you're watching the ESL India Premiership organized by Nordwin Gaming and okay, never mind that. We've got a resume coming out. So yeah, as I was saying, you're watching the ESL India Premiership, organized by Nordwin Gaming and sponsored by HyperX and ROG. That's the fourth death on this Draw Ranger. And her net worth is starting to look abysmal now. Meanwhile, Oracle having a ball of a time here, getting closer and closer to an early mechanism as a support. In fact, I think the Oracle's the one leading on kills as well. So you've got the full drums finished up on the Spectre now, so it is going to be Battle Spectre going forward. I expect them to make a play in the next 50 seconds once the Haunt is back online. And that should coincide with the time that the Epicenter comes back as well. Um, Sand King choosing to go for the 4 stop this game, I assume. As opposed to the Veil for the extra bit of magic damage. Mobility does seem to be the name of the game here. Quick item check on both sides here. On the Dio Kelvin. He's almost finished up his mechanism. At least that's one tool that they're gonna have to withstand some of the damage coming out from Roar. 
But uh, no one else really making too much progress. The storm getting closer and closer in the early, well, not an early bloodstone, but a bloodstone nonetheless. We're gonna rely on farming jungle stacks for now, but top. We've got the entirety of Exodus grouping up, trying to take a tier 1, but a good tornado clips onto 2, and with the EMP, they should be able to get this kill on Kelvin, they've got the cooker ghost ship coming through, the wall even thrown down, Clown K taking no damage whatsoever, with a long range zip from the from the uh, Storm Spirit, it's not even gonna matter, he's now out of mana, a double kill for the Spectre, one kill for the Oracle, making it a 3-0 trade, and the Spectre's not done just yet, he's got the double damage rune and is moving forward, however the X mark and the torrent seems to have stopped him in his tracks. Allowing the Kunkha to get away. That was a very haphazard engagement taken by Exteus. It's gonna cost them a tier 1 tower on the back of this. They've still got the epicenter. Should they choose to fight here, Exteus cannot contest this tower. And it would be a grave mistake to do so. More real estate being lost for XTS, the top tier one. Taken down comfortably, but Rory Sports showing no signs of stopping. Textbook Dota coming out from them. They'll take a tier one, move into the jungle, deward the high ground, and look to pressure them throughout the laning phase, or rather the mid game phase. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Spectre, he's now picked up a Yasha as well, so no early Radiance is going to be coming out for him. They do want to fight often. I mean, if this continues, there's, this is not going to work out for XDS at all. I feel like they need to be popping smokes and finding pickoffs on these solo farmers like the Spectre. They should know that uh, Roar Esports is now playing 4-man split Dota. And oh, not like this. There's a massive Boros Strike along with a 2-man uh, Tornado EMP coming through. That's the death of the Draw Ranger while Phoenix is Supernova. Looks like it's gonna pop here in the middle of the fray. 2 down, about to make it 3 as it looks like Roar Esports and other ones on the run. They will end up losing the Elder Titan, but they've still gotten one core and a support, and they're looking for more. With the Spectre coming through, the Dagger will secure the kill on the Darks here, and with the Power Strike to hold the Storm in position, that'll be the death of him as well, making it a five-man team wipe will be Clown K's Invoker, with the Urn and the Cold Snap sealing the deal. So it's a 5-1 trade, a trade that Exodus will not be happy with whatsoever, and it all started on the back of a two-man Power Strike, courtesy of the Sand King. Not too much that XDS can do here at this point. It's pretty much easy setup for this Sand King with the Force and the Blink Dagger. As long as XDS doesn't have vision of him initiating, they have no way to stop him from coming in and starting the fight on Roar Esports' the turns. And the more kills that the, this uh, Spectre gets, uh, the stronger she's gonna get. The Yasha already picked up her Mantis style isn't too far away either. Dyer's middle tower under attack. Meanwhile, this draw ranger, completely poor at the moment, is stacking up the agility, trying to get the dragon lance online. She's fallen well behind the curve and I don't see any way for her to make a comeback. It's not like draw ranger is one of the fastest farmers in the game either. But hey, she's gonna try and split push this top lane. Might get a free tier 1 at the very least. And Sand King doesn't want to give up any freebies. The Caustic Finale damage, that's a drop ton of damage, really. In fact, with the slow from the Caustic Finale, I think Draw Ranger's just going to end up dying here. He's choosing not to pop a Gus, and with the Burrow Strike coming through, more Caustic Finale damage will be deployed, and that'll be the death of the Draw. She buys back even out of frustration. What is going on here for XTS? <laughs> Why would you buy back on the Draw Ranger? That's not helping at all. I mean, the damage has already been done. The Phoenix and the Dark here have died at mid. Well, Spectre now has the money to buy out the ultimate orb as we do see the courier heading towards the shop. It's gonna be the Invoker actually calling out his uh, second Oblivion staff and full Orchid, in fact. While the Yule Scepter is now being finished up on the Elder Titan as well. 
With that Orchid online, solo pickoff potential goes through the roof for this Invoker as well. About to see the Draw Ranger meeting a Maker. Orchid, Cold Snap, no EMP, but the Tornado was dropped to stop the storm. That was a mistake from Clown K, and he's gonna pay for it with his life. A killing spree now taken away from, well, courtesy of the Storm Spirit. A little bit of a recovery will allow the Storm to pick up his Bloodstone now. But it does come at the cost of the tier 1 at bottom. Spectre claiming the money on the back of that. Now has the full Manta style to be flown out to her. There's the Veil of Discord. Finished up on the Sand King as well. Middle tower a little bit of miscommunication. Looks like uh, he didn't realize the courier was heading back out. Now it's going to take a U-turn. Go back to the fountain. Pick up the veil and then come back out. So there's a Manta style, a veil of discord, and even the Yule Scepter recipe flying out for all esports. New shiny toys coming their way while Exteus have been starved right now. They have picked up the Bloodstone on this storm though. Which means that if they can manage to get a few kills... Might see them start snowballing a little bit towards the recovery. Draw Ranger almost finishing up the Dragon Land, so once she has it, a little bit, uh, a little more survivability will be coming away, along with some firepower. Rory Sports. Looking like they mean business here. They want to end this game with a huge item and gold advantage that they have. Long K still moving around under cover of the ghost walk. Hoping that he can pick someone off unawares. But the dire side, it's on their homework. They've dropped observers and sentries near their tier 2 tower. To scout out any of these cheeky movements from. Uh, Okay. There we go though, Tornado, it does connect, it even use the Haunt, and with the Silence coming out on the Phoenix, he's gonna die, the Epi comes through, they'll get the kill on Kelvin as well, it's a double kill for the Sand King, the Ghost Ship thrown out, but Spectre is looking for a target, can't make up her mind, but decides to run fast for the Kunkka, all the gusts from the Draw Ranger will keep the rest of the these puts as Bay, They've still got the bar strike going through and they will finish the job on the draw ranger deep inside enemy lines here. While the tier 2 tower falls behind, Clown King playing objective Dota. Looking for more. The Storm Spirit unable to find a target on the retreat. This looks like it's all but over here for Exteus. As Roar Esports are knocking on high ground. Long range zip coming up from this storm. He's gonna get stunned up in position. The echo stop not connecting. And the supernova completely useless there. Not getting anything done. Rory Sports playing disciplined Dora. They'll back away for now. It is the smart thing for them to do. Wait for the uh, Spectre to get the Haunt back online. Wait for the Epicenter to come back. And come back with uh, an even larger item advantage for the next battle. Perhaps even take Roshan before going up onto the high ground. There's no real rush for them to end this. With the Spectre on their ranks. Late game is uh, something that they have in the bag as well. Next is. They're going to be able to get anything done at all here. It's still just a level 8 Kunkha. It's a level 1 ghost ship. Which does a piddly amount of damage at this point. I'm assuming it's going to be a Radiance on this Spectre this game. She has stacked up a good 2900 gold but... Raw Esports looking for a pick off before taking the last remaining outer tower on top. With the Invoker walking forward they're now going to see the Storm. They do have uh, the silence should the storm walk further out there. But uh, Exodus knows that this is happening. They're just gonna wait deep inside their base. Not gonna fight unless Aurora Esports comes to their high ground. 
Without having vision in this general area here, it uh, doesn't seem like a bad idea for XTS to step outside their base. They're gonna try anyway. Their smoke's been dispelled on the high ground. Sand King has spotted this out. He's popped the veil and then blinked away. While the storm zips in, they get the silence off with the double gust. The deliverance has been silenced up with the griefs. We'll shrug it off. Now the supernova in the middle of everything. The horn is there as well with the EAP connecting on multiple heroes. The ghost ship comes in. Doesn't connect on Clown K. He survives. While deliverance will go down. That's a godlike streak taken away by the storm. But the epicenter. It's huge and it's there. It doesn't get any kills just yet for Roar Esports. In fact, it's two down for Roar. With the storm getting a double kill. But now it's time. Roar Esports gets two for themselves. The Spectre comes through. Gets one on the Dark Sea and one on the Kunkka. But Spectre about to lose his life to the Storm, but Storm is out of mana and Storm is in trouble. As the Sand King's got the Burrow Strike, stuns him up in position. With the Spectre laying straight into him, he'll get the kill. And XTS ends up losing four. The only survivor is this Phoenix. The dagger will not connect on him. And he will survive as Roar Esports will still reach high ground. And with a low respawn timer on this uh, Storm Spirit, Spectre does well to back away from this. However, uh, they do have vision of him if Storm wants to attempt a long range zip down south. Meanwhile, Phoenix. That was a bad idea. The Sun Strike. Oh, it doesn't connect. That should have been the death of him. Uh oh. They've got the X mark, but it's in a different direction here. The torrent off the mark as well, and now Sand King comes right back in to finish the job on the combo. And to add insult to injury, they'll even get the D ward on these servers and sentries. Not like this, XTS. I'm calling it this. I mean, I know that I shouldn't be calling the game before it's over and all, but it's gonna take an absolute miracle for XTS to be coming back here. Like, I'm talking five man vacuum wall into five man supernova and ghost ship level of extreme comeback mechanisms here. And Roar Esports, I mean, they, they'd have to be very foolish to get caught off like that. And I don't think they're fools at all. The smart thing to do here is claim Roshan and then go high ground. On Spectre. It's now finished up the Radiance as well. The next haunt is going to be so painful for Exodus. I pity them. Contest on this uh, Roshan or Esports. Three ages here for Weapon X. Next is they have smoked, but they're a little too late to this party. Roshan is already down, and the storm is probably not going to be able to zip in in time. Three ages played. Weapon X can't afford to pop the haunt here if he chooses to. The pings are coming out towards the bottom lane. This is where the tier 3 tower is the lowest. They'll push the spectre onto a different lane towards the middle. While uh, the rest of all esports will begin their assault to the bottom. Oh, Draw Ranger, why are you out here? If that Echo Storm connects, she might just be dead. Echo Storm, it is going to connect. It's deep inside the base, but it has put her to sleep nonetheless. It looks like they won't be going any further though. Middle lane is already pushed in. You've got the Manta expended from the Spectre. We should keep the momentum going here. And that bottom clown came with the Alacrity. Doing chip damage on this tier 3. In fact, he's gonna take it down. But the fortification will stall it for a little longer. Mark, Torrance, Ghost Ship, all connecting. They've got the Fates Edict though, with the epicenter coming in from behind. They've got the kill on the Draw Ranger. Supernova's there. They've got the EMP in the Tornado. Spectre's already killed him with the Dark Seer, while the Storm is out of mana and he will die. Well, maybe he won't, but everyone else will. The Phoenix, the only survivor. In fact, the Storm actually died, and GG will be called. As not a single hero on the side of Roar Esports goes down here. XTS have tapped out 29 minutes in. 
Gore Esports are your victors for the first game of the day. Now progress through the brackets of the ESL Indian Premiership. Well, stick around folks. We've